All right guys, so today I'm gonna to do a video here. It's something that you guys have been asking about and that is uh, about flight records. So this is pertaining to the DJI products and the DJI Go 4 app. So this is the way I do it. Um, and the reason I do it is, you know, I don't necessarily want all my information public. So I just feel a little bit better about this process versus having apps that are sharing all of my locations and where I'm at, especially filming for YouTube. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump right in it. What you'll need is your phone, and in this case I have an iPhone. Um, you need the charge cord for it. So what I do is I plug in the phone first and get that all set up. Now you'll need to make sure in your settings that your phone and your laptop or whatever computer you have are gonna communicate with each other. I'm gonna go in, it's gonna see my phone, and it's gonna ask all sorts of stuff. Do I wanna update, do I wanna sync? I don't wanna do any of that. Basically what I wanna do is go in and click into the files. And here we see all sorts of apps and all we're concerned about is DJI Go 4. And we are looking for the flight records. So there's a lot of you know different things in here, but what you're looking for is flight records. So what we're gonna do in my processes is I, and actually I've already got a flight records on my desktop. So what I do is I drag and drop this over. And from there, you are gonna get a folder that looks like this. So that completes the steps to get the flight records onto your computer. So that step is done. The problem is these are text files that don't make any sort of sense. So from here, we are going to need a software. And in this case, uh, we are gonna go to our airdata.com. Now again, Air Data does have an app that you could use, um, but in this case, this is the way I prefer to do it, and I kind of like working off a laptop for this. Um, but there are so many, so many cool things in here. Now I have a free account. You can upgrade accounts, and that gives you a lot more features, but we're just gonna show what you get with the free account. So I'm gonna go to My Logs, and it's gonna show everything I've got. So the last time I did this was on November 26th. So I'm gonna to go to Upload. And we're gonna drag and drop, or we can select files. So let's go ahead and select files. We're gonna to go to where my flight records are, which is right here. And I'm going to look for something that I have not done yet, which is this one here. So we're gonna click Upload Flights, and it is uploading all of the data, and it's just unbelievable. I'm kind of a data freak, I get really into this stuff, and I just think it's really, really cool that with your drone, you have access to all sorts of information that you probably didn't even know it was storing, which is almost kinda of crazy in a way. Um, it even tells you what the weather was in that area. It uh, gives you a lot of different um, a lot of different information on things that are going on with your drone. All right, so this is actually one of the flights I did on YouTube. So as you can tell here on the screen, if we look over here, it gives a date and the time. It's got the name of my drone. Um, we have how long we were in the air. So we actually made it 10 minutes and 51 seconds. We had a takeoff battery of 95% and we landed at 29%. So it gives you all of that. It gives you your total mileage. So if you track all of your flights in this app, it's actually gonna track your total mileage, much like a vehicle or you know equipment would. The drone does as well. And that's something that's actually really kind of handy. It lets you know how how much use and abuse. So if you have any maintenance to do, if you're using this for commercial reasons, or you know, if uh, you know DJI says you get 500 charge cycles, you can keep track of all that stuff in here, which is really, really cool. Gives you your max distance, in this case, 1,255 feet, my maximum al altitude, my max speed, uh, the max battery temperature, 
So that's really, really cool. So at first I looked at this and I'm like, oh, that's a lot of good information. Then I noticed all of the other bits of data. So if we start here with the tab on the details, we'll click that. It's giving all sorts of information here. Um, click on the notifications. It's going to tell you what notifications popped up on the drone. So in this case, on my Spark, and if we zoom up, there's a whole bunch that are usually recorded right by your home takeoff point. So if you click on any one of these, it's going to tell you mode changed to GPS. If I click on this cape, precision landing, and it's telling you the altitude that that kicked in, the distance from home. It's going to give you your battery life in 10% increments throughout your trip. So you can kind of see, okay, we were at 40% when we hit this point here. And what's this notice? Aircraft returning to home. So that's right when I clicked the return to home button was right there. And it gives you 156 feet from home. Really, really cool. Give you a large map. So that gives you an overall map of the flight. Now, if we go on the left side, this is where things get interesting. Look at this. So if you are like me and you freak out over data, this is awesome. So it's giving you your basically your miles per charge and your minutes per charge. Your total mileage, everything in the green is good to go. Scroll down, it gives you some information about how to interpret this. Sensors, another really, really cool thing. So green is good. Orange is fair, red is poor. So where this comes in really handy to avoid flyaways, if you're flying in an area pretty commonly, what I'll do is I'll get into here and just make sure that, you know, say I fly at this park frequently, I just want to make sure that, you know, there's no point that I'm losing satellites, that I'm having any sort of issues, because if there were, there's other areas of this park I could go to. So if, say for instance, at the home point, I'm having some problems, I'd change my home takeoff point to a different part of that park. And it's just that simple. So that's, that is awesome. The other cool thing is now these tabs changed. My signal score at this park is a hundred, which is perfect. And that's probably, you know, it makes sense because of that particular park, there is a RC flying area. So, I would assume that they pick a good area that's out of any sort of interference and that makes sense here. So a perfect 100% and it's usually not like that. So that tells you it's a really good area. Now GPS, it's telling you orange is good. Green would be excellent. So there is room for improvement there. That means I probably didn't have the max number of satellites. And if we scroll down, it's actually giving you based on your flight, how many satellites you had. So at one point, looks like five seconds in, I dropped to nine satellites. So also good information to have if you're flying in kind of similar areas. And here it says no issues found based on the compass. So again, I did not on this flight do a compass calibration and there it's saying I was good to go. Controls. And it's saying not enough data there. Weather. It's good to have that. So if I'm, you know, kind of wondering in some cases why my battery may have dropped quicker, for instance, I can tell here, okay, I was flying, it was 23 degrees and it was actually fairly windy out that day. Um, 10.4 miles an hour. Uh, the wind chill was 12.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's good to have. And you have all sorts of information. Look at this. I mean, this is just crazy. So again, we'd have to upgrade here to get this sort of stuff. I don't have this with my account. And then media, let's see what that is. No media found. So if we wanted to upload anything, you know, like we want to upload our, our actual video off of the drone, this is where we would do it. So for me, I find most of uh, what I find useful here in the battery information, and I'll click through, I did not click through these cells. Um, one thing I have noticed here, and it's it's you know good to have, is I do have a little bit of deviation in one of my cells. 
Here it's saying everything's good. Once in a while, I do get a report down here that says that issues were found. And typically when I find there's issues, it's when I didn't fully charge the drone before flying it. So that really taught me, you know, that it's good when I'm doing this sort of stuff. When I'm when I'm trying to charge between locations, I really should let that drone charge fully all the way up. Um, and we're gonna go ahead, click on the cell graph. Look at this. I mean, this is just crazy. It's giving me each cell and what the voltage is on the flight. And all of this is free. Just blows my mind. Remaining batteries, so it's showing a pretty steady drop here, which is good to see. You don't want any major spikes in either, either direction. Um, volts and amps. So here, everything's good. We had no voltage drops. And the battery info. This is really, really cool. So it's telling you what your initial capacity is. It's telling you the max temperature, the min temperature. So again, here it shows that I had this in the car warming up. So it started at 62 degrees, even though it was 24 degrees outside. Um, and it's giving you your battery life. So this is where I find this to be the most useful in my book. This is great, great information. It's showing as I flew how that battery was warming up. And in a cold day like this, you really don't expect it to warm up too much. And at this point, it had only been charged 13 times, so it keeps track of all that. So that's it in a nutshell. I really want to thank you guys for watching. I just want to give you a, a quick shot here of, of what my process is. So as you saw, within five minutes of hooking this up, you're ready getting the data you need and you have access to all these flights that you've done. I've done more than this, so I haven't been real good about updating this information like I probably should. Um, but there you go. That's uh, what you get using this Air Data UAV app. And actually in this case, it's a website, but they do have an app too. So if you wanna check that out, I'm sure that process is a little bit more streamlined. Again, this is just the way I prefer to do it. So hit me up if you have any questions. Do me a big favor, smash that like button and subscribe if you like these videos. Thank you and we'll see you in the next.